Hello again, my beautiful people. One day I will show you my magnificent new backyard, but not today. Okay, so I feel like this is week two in the brand new hometown, which is going good. I still feel like I'm not totally just settled in, but I'm getting there because it still just feels brand new. Okay, today, so this is gonna still be in my mindset playlist. Um, what I wanted to go over today is a couple of things. Well, first of all, I wasn't able to type a whole lot because my computer, my iPad was annoying me and locking up, but uh, I don't want to mess around with it too too much. So I'm just going to refer to my notes and uh, probably cover a couple of different areas. So let's talk about something different. Um, there's so many things I could talk about, right? I have so many different opinions and different perspectives. And then obviously as the different stages go in life, um, you know, I'm gonna have always things to talk about, like I said, uh, but I feel like in my videos, I still haven't given enough examples of things, uh, professional or personal life or whatever it is, right? And I think I just really need to write them down. I need to focus on that and really write them down to give you more examples because in a lot of my other video series and playlists, I kind of put things here and there, especially with the people pleaser one. I think I do talk a little bit about borrowing, uh, letting people borrow money, and I just, just feel like there's just not enough examples. And uh, from all these things, you know, that I've gone through, like all of us. And uh, today, I'm going to switch it up completely because obviously I always have opinions, comments, different things on different things that I see going on out there in the world, even though I don't watch a lot of social and definitely don't even get on things really at all. Like I'm really surprised actually that I don't because I've lived a life of researching. So most of the time I'm talking about love and relationships because that's one of my favorite subjects and how to get along with people and navigating them, right? This is part of that, but it still always comes back to mindset and personal empowerment right? How can we have either less stress to overcome or manage this situation, blah, blah, blah. And it's usually with other people, right? A lot of times, yes, it's me with myself trying to live within the world, but, uh, you know, over, I don't know, I guess trying to like not being overwhelmed by certain things of just living here, right? Ever since I was a teenager. And then also why writing was a part, a huge part of my therapy, right? So not talking about love and relationships today, while I might go there later, that's not the focus. Today was going to talk about this ongoing, I call it pro problematic thing with scammers and fraudul fraudulent stuff. It's like, should, should I, can I just cancel everything online? So going back to the whole finding out, because there were some different things that we were dealing with and finding out that actually the bank said, if your claim, if you do put in a claim against somebody, if it is less than $5,000, they can't even guarantee you're going to get your money back. So I'm like, well, fuck, what do people do? Are they, if, if that's all the money that they have, are they using credit cards to live? Like what's going on? And what can we do as a people to help prevent this? You know, yes, you can get uh, protection, identity theft protection. You could do this and that and whatever. Um, I don't know to the levels though of how much or how that's going to help you in the current moment because you would still have to put in a claim for that. Well, you're out your money, whatever the amount was, you know, even if 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. So it reminded me again of how we need to take control in our own ways and how we handle our cash, which this is not an episode on how to do that. You can figure out your own ways. Having the safe, a simple thing of whatever it is or whatever you want to store it, right? So that's what I wanted to share there is I think that we all know that is that when it comes to putting in claims on things or things with insurance companies and them not wanting to pay out, I feel like there's all these things as we walk through life, it's like, okay, I did that. I did that and nothing became of it or it was more stress to actually put in the claim and deal with it. Okay. So when these things happen with, happen to us, for us, however you want to look at it, we can change our mind about how we're going to deal with it, right? Or react to it or respond to it or whatever. I'm always going to say that because we have a choice. 
just have to just stop, right? And think that you have a different way to look at it. And number one, though, of those things in anything is don't give energy to negative thoughts and thinking. These are not, I would say, positive things that happen to us, right? The scammers, the fraudulent thing. I feel like also, too, we have to get way smarter than these people. They also, over the phone stuff, right? They sound really honest and sincere, and maybe some of them are. Maybe they were hired. They don't even know what they're doing is um, or think that they're lying. They're just pro trying to provide for their families. Like, we don't know people's situations and they get into these jobs and maybe they think they are being honest about what they're doing because this is what they were told. And that person, their boss, whoever it is, made it sound really good. Okay. Um, so I get it. So these things that are stressful, that especially when you mess around with people's finances, like this is serious shit, right? So all of these things and lessons that I've learned in life about perception, uh, mindset, perception, how we perceive, and that we can change it. There's so much that I've looked at is like, okay, what was that part either taught to me, shown, influenced, who was doing it? You know, why do I think like this? Why do I think these things? Why did I think this about... You know, the government, like from such an early age, for those of you, I haven't talked about it too much, but also don't know I, my my intense love or almost like um, love, passion or whatever for specifically veterans and also first responders, by the way, the two groups of people that we can help all unite us, right? And um, from a young age that I, I asked, was asking more set myself while I always knew structure and authority figures is like a sense of control, right? Um, power and authority. That's how you kind of get people to do what you want and um, to whatever the reason is, right? To just control them, to make money off of them, whatever you're, you, when you look at the things of the world of why people do things and operate. But I had always thought from that young age, like what, what happens to that warrior, that soldier, that, um, you know, that does something against their moral compass their against their belief systems against their spirit that goes against them what what happens inside of them and from that point forward and because i know that there are a lot of things that people we do that is um what's just what would say what do i say the government will do things that we don't like Right. And what can we do to empower ourselves? It's been history, right? We all need to study history more. Is that how we as the people, what can we do to fight for ourselves and we the people? Okay. So this personal empowerment, this is how empowerment, this is how I'm connecting all of this is this, these different life situations we get into, um, how can we feel more empowered that we have control of our own lives and that we can change America, the world, or whatever it is, right? Because we are a part of it. You know, why can't we get a leader or president who is a reflection of our truest natures, nature, which is of love and light and good? Even in the movies, right? There's something that, that tells us that good will win, right? There's, there's obviously something. So I know I talked a lot right there, um, but basically this was about how do we overcome these situations like this in dealing with these people, and we do have to become smarter. Um, I know with all the goddamn passwords that I have to write down now because, you know, you can't use ones on certain sites and whatever, that's enough to make anybody crazy. Yes, we can do those sor sorts of things and all this authentication, but authentication, but moving forward in life, they're probably going to continue to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And what are we going to do about this? Okay, so that's why constantly, that's why people, I say, if you don't like the word pray, or you don't want to say meditate, it's talk to yourself about talk, talk and sitting with ourselves to always uh, be protected. Um, 
when you serve and are of love, good will always come to you. So if you can put that dedicated time into praying or talking to yourself, whatever you want to do, that you are always loved and protected and pushing this sort of negative type of energy away, right? Um, doing like black tourmaline incense and things like that to help protect ourselves from these situations that can cause more stress in our lives, right? I would like to have less stress. And one way I'm going to be doing that is removing certain things from my life, right? That I think I, I know that every day in life, there are stressors, but there are different things that, you know, to the level that I want to handle them and to the, and what I consider a stress. Okay. So I am definitely going to remove things that I feel like are going to cause more, uh, noise, more drama, more whatever it is, you know, and sometimes that does actually involve less people. So the other thing that I wanted to do, okay, so we talked about that part. This is also part of personal empowerment. Okay, so I talked about, this is funny, I was talking the other day about moving to my new town and being able to perfect my Spanish, which is dumb from the perspective of, I could have practiced it still when I was in Sacramento, but basically because there are these little food trucks and stuff like that, specifically, we had food trucks over there, but over here, like if you wanna try the food and a lot of them don't speak a lot of English, I'm going to have to be forced if I want to eat it. So if I, and I want to try it. And so back in the day, this is going back to courage and mindset. You can apply this though in so many areas of your life. I'm just going to give you an example with language. Um, so Spanish is one thing I will be able to per, um, hopefully perfect just a little bit more. Um, Thai, I taught myself because my mom didn't, and I should actually know a lot more Portuguese just because I love Brazilian music so much. So I had that fear. I remember back in the day because I'm just proud of myself that I know certain things on a basic level or that I even just know one or two words. Also, it builds re relatability with other people, you know, like I should know, I feel like I should even just know hellos in most languages or in here in Sacramento, Russian, Tagalog, and what else was I going to say? Russian, Tagalog. Yeah, those, so there's many other languages, but I was so fearful before, especially with Thai because it's tonal language. So you can actually say one word like five different ways. Um, and then just jumping in because the worst that can happen is generally people don't laugh at you. This is my experience. They don't laugh at you for trying. They're actually very impressed and happy because they like it. It's like you're making an effort and or you're intrigued, right? So I want to encourage you to all these things in life, when I go back to talking about personal empowerment and becoming the person that I am now, that I never thought that I would be, is pushing myself all through these dumb little fears. I look at them as dumb, dumb fears because they were very false. I feel like I had them like, why, why was I scared of that? Like who would think right learning another language? Like who cares? Like I said, that's worse that can happen. Okay. Being embarrassed that you said it wrong or whatever it is like, it's okay. It's not that serious. But when you're an introvert, like you're scaredy cat about a lot of things, right? Just like approaching people and me being just so scared and, and just things, not social skills, right? Not knowing how to include myself and instead feeling like I feel left out, you know? I didn't even know how to put those two together or that I'm making myself feel left out because I didn't know that it was no social skills and confidence. Like my two friends, acquaintance friends growing up and always feeling like a third wheel because they were always so loud and always having fun and talking with each other and I felt left, left out, you know? Why couldn't I just join in? So going back to pushing yourself through these different fears, approaching people, wanting to date, wanting to make new friends, wanting to do these things in your life that maybe you keep thinking about, well, I should do that um, in a relationship. If the other person doesn't want to do things with you, which I never expected that my husband would want to do everything with me, it's the same thing with friends. 
So if I am tired of asking them to go, they're not available, whatever the reason, it's, it's, it's the whole, okay, I will either have to go by myself to something or not do it, right? So there's a lot that I've learned in some ways of my life of living in with a lot within myself and solitude. And this can also come from people that are just, if we say I'm mostly the stay at home mom or people that the other significant is just working all of the time. Like it's just depending on your life setup. I never had a problem sitting with myself. I feel like I was just since a teenager, right? Living out in the country. I was a lot of times with myself and not doing very much and a lot of reading. Okay. So if you want to say I've lived a very solitude, um, solitude-ish, isolated in some ways, we'll say isolated life. And then just because of how I am and the way that I think and, and, and I guess feeling misunderstood and all of those sorts of thoughts that I deal with within myself, I have had to deal with that as well. And I think I just naturally always questioned. And when I moved to the city and I got interacting with other people and I had questions about them, it helped me when I wanted to understand them, it helped me understand myself. Okay. So we are going on into 17 minutes. And so let's go ahead and wrap this up. I will have some more things to talk about when I'm able to type and I can get, um, get more going about, uh, more, more things that I would like to share. And again, more examples. I really need to give you guys more examples. Uh, lastly, I think that I want to talk about today is since I have to, so since I've been slacking, actually it's been years, years I've been slacking with my workout and I was back and forth. And last that I was talking about was my boxing and I may be finding another new place because I need to keep myself intact. Um, <laughs> there's, I'm really not dedicating enough time at home. I just posted some Muay Thai uh, video for those of you that want to look on there. I think I put it under boxing and I put it under something else, my culture, Thai culture, that I like following that guy, um, is that, you know, this is part of the wellness thing, the, the discipline to discipline for what? Well, for me, I've realized it's my self care, right? And to feel better because I just feel gross. Even any, eating any forms of carbs or anything, you know, gluten, all of that stuff that can make you feel bloated and all that sort of stuff. Like, okay, so staying fit and doing these things to feel better to exist for the rest of my life, right? A lot of people do it for vanity. A lot of people are doing it, you know, to feel better. Obviously, staying in shape, feel good. I definitely didn't want to become lazier with age. And I'm really excited that I can run back and forth, even in my own house, and get exercise there. And if we have farm animals and things like that. But uh, looking at where I am heading, looking at where you are heading, assessing your mindset and having a goal. I mean, you got to have be motivated, right? And to stick to the discipline and I get way too distracted. So this is how, even when I'm at home, that's why I like to go somewhere is that, okay, how am I going to stay disciplined? How am I going to this? It's like, I start thinking, okay, oh, music's going to help here. This is going to do this, this I'm thinking. And, and ultimately at the end, it's my lifestyle. I have to return back to that, even if it's only once a week, but it still makes me look at these these things that I'm doing and it's like well what am I doing what am I doing here rest of life when it comes to my health what um moving forward like what do I need to do to maintain what am I willing what am I willing to maintain I mean I know certain things like stretching right are very essential and mandatory so this is a part of just asking you, like a lot of people don't sleep very well, have health problems. I want to enjoy the rest of my life in good health. So of course I've always wanted to, but I know that that's a part of it. And I hear so many stories. This, I guess could be personal example. Uh, talking to somebody about basically her husband. Um, he was 
um, military vet, yes, PTSD, but during even during that time, he had some martial arts schools and he was really in shape and he was doing all the, you know, suggested things to stay healthy and he still ended up, um, so of course PTSD and military stuff and different things wrecked him in a lot of ways and he started to go down to hill, he became diabetic and he ended up having a stroke and passing. So it's kind of like, what are we doing all of this for? right? To stay alive longer. Hopefully, you know, some of us still, sorry, if that's one of the reasons, right, that we want to stay here for our loved ones or whatever our reasons is, it's like, I think it's good to just go back and reassess what you're doing. And if you don't feel good and you're living off of energy drinks and you're eating what you would say, we would say maybe poorly, I feel like I'm doing good if I'm doing 80, 20, right? 80% is decent, uh, you know, and me just maybe not eating adequately enough in, in certain, you know, things or areas or my proteins. But anyway, now I'm rambling on. Okay, people. So I guess I just really wanted to talk about this last part is like looking at our health and how important it is to us. And for some people, it's not very important. Um, I just happened to find something that I love and I've gotten away from it with my fighting systems and everything. And I'm just thinking about, okay, I'm doing good. Even if I get a walk in right three mile walk or whatever, but what can I do to stay disciplined because I'm dropping off and I don't feel good as a result of doing that. And I can undo this, right? I can, I can, I can undo this. And what am I willing to commit to, to make myself get back, get back to it? And it doesn't have to be my fighting systems and my boxing, my Muay Thai. It doesn't have to only solely be there, but what will I commit to? And what am I willing to say, like, be easy on myself and say, okay, I did good today or I did good this week, whatever that is, because I know how it makes me feel. Okay, people, that is all for today. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much in this last part. I know that I did, and uh, but I will work on my next pieces that, I mean, examples that I can give you from real life situations of different things in personal empowerment or mindset or whatever it is I'm feeling in the moment that I think you might need to hear. Okay, so I will meet you in the next video. Bye.